Hello everyone, it's Sunday the 23rd and I just completed the first week of development on my new video game. And honestly, I got a lot more done than I expected. I thought these first few weeks were really just going to be planning and everything, since I only have a couple hours every work day to work on this um, after I do my full-time job. So I didn't think I was going to get any actual coding done. But really, I was able to get all of my planning that I wanted to get up front done in the first few days. I guess I've been thinking about this project for a little while. And so I was really able to get into the code for the rest of the week. So let's take a look at what I got done this week. All right, so the first thing I did for this week was to set up this project management board in Trello. Now, basically, this allows me to keep track of all the tasks I need to get done for this game. They start off in this backlog over here. I move them through these different columns as I work on them, ultimately finding their way into the done column. Then I move them into archive when I'm done with these two weeks, and I can move on to the next sprint. The first things I worked on is figuring out the software I was going to be using for this project, um, the game engine, and then the art software that I was going to be using. I looked at a bunch of different game engines such as Unity, Godot, Unreal Engine, Game Maker Studio, and a few others, and I ultimately decided on using Unity uh, because it works for what I'm doing and I have a lot of experience with it. Uh, the art software I'm using is called Asprite, and I'll put links in the description for both of these pieces of software if you would like to check them out. For the game setting, I've decided on either medieval or fantasy. I don't know which one just yet, if I want to go in the dragons and magic route or a bit more historically accurate, but feel free to leave a comment down below to, uh, saying which one you'd be excited to see. The art style is going to be pixel art, low pixel count, high saturation, and I'm getting this inspiration from games such as Celeste and Stardew Valley, which I mentioned in my previous video. I just like this style because I can create art very quickly as pixel art and if it's low pixel count, and it looks really good as high saturation as well. So I think it's a good direction for this game. After that, it was time to really work on the game mechanics. All of the different pieces of the puzzle that go into this game that make this game work. Now I wanted to do this a little differently than a lot of starting indie solo game developers do. I wanted to have justification for every game mechanic I put into this game. The reason I do this is because a lot of people starting out will just throw in pieces into their game because they feel like they're supposed to be there. If they make an RPG, they're like, well there has to be side quests, there has to be health system. Uh, there has to be an inventory without questioning why those things are in the game, why those things are in the genre, and if those things are best suited for their game. So a platforming game may have double jump. Why is there double jump? The developer doesn't know. They just put it into the game because they've seen other people do it. I want to avoid that pitfall, so I created this game mechanics justification document, which basically makes sure that anything I put into the game has a justification. So, so far, I have non-turn-based player movement, inventory system, NPC player communication, seamless scene transitions, and player character data. If you're interested in having a copy of this document as I go through this uh, game and add more to this and remove things from here, then feel free to put a, a comment after this video and I'll look into having a running document provided for you. After I did that, I was pretty close to being able to start working on the game itself. Just created a basic game description that should be fairly obvious from what I've been talking about so far. A 2D RPG style game set in a medieval slash fantasy world with a heavy concentration on adventure and immersion. Most people think of either virtual reality or at least 3D games when it comes to being immersed in a video game. But I really want to lean heavily into the immersion quality of a 2D top-down pixel art game and see where I can go with that. And then adventure, just because I love adventure. That's mainly the reason why I'm making this game. I love making stories and places and things to discover. Um, and I love going through worlds that have those. So this is really what I'm aiming for, adventure and immersion. After that, I was able to start working on code this very first week, which shocked me. And I started with the player movement controller. All right, so here we are in Unity, and as you can see, I'm keeping the game very simple art-wise. Just a green checkerboard for the background, the camera, and then the player, which is for now just a, bl uh, just a bland square. That'll change later on, of course, but I want to concentrate on game mechanics. So to implement player movement, I'm keeping it very simple for right now. Simply in this update method, which runs roughly at once every frame, 
I'm taking the player's current position and I'm setting it to a new position. This new position is going to be their current position plus input um, both the horizontal and vertical keys basically is what this is. So the up, down, left, right keys times a movement speed, which is something I can change within Unity, and then a base multiplier, just so that that movement speed that I'm changing doesn't affect the speed that much. All right, so now back in Unity, if I come up and hit play, you'll notice that my character can move around as I press the arrow keys. And if I change this movement speed over here to say one, then he moves a lot slower. It's super simple, but it's a huge start. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got another week of development ahead of me. I have now officially finished two weeks of development on this game, and I feel pretty good at where things are at this point. On top of the work I did last week that we talked about earlier, I've added basic player data system to the mix as well as uh, the backbones of an inventory system and some NPC player communication. The first thing I needed to figure out this week was how I was going to store and retrieve data concerning the game. Data is everywhere in a video game, such as the statements that NPCs are making, items that might drop from chests or enemies, health that you or an enemy may have, um, and stats or abilities that a character has in the game. It's all over the place, and I needed to figure out early on how I was going to store that. I don't know how I'm going to do this in the long run, but right now what I'm doing is I'm storing it in these JSON files right here. JSON is just a quick, easy way to store data that can be modified and easily retrieved later on. So for example, this player JSON may store the data, the name variable that is currently Paul of Tarsus. And this player might have health, which could be split up by head, torso, the arms, and legs that are set to 100 currently on this file. This is just an example, and this can be changed any way I want. Now that I have a file like this, I'm able to go in and create a data access manager class uh, customized specifically for something like this that can pull data from these files and add data to these files. A practical example of this is something that I did here. I created this NPC file, janesmith.json, uh, where I'm storing the statements that this NPC is making. Get your fresh fruit here, fresh from the garden every day. Hope you enjoy. And I've stored these in values 0, 1, and 2, which I'm able to access in my NPC communication script over here. What this means is I'm able to access that data and do this with it. Whenever I walk up close to this NPC, this little white circle over here, she says, get your fresh fruit here. And then when I hit the E key, I've implemented so that um, hitting this key brings me to the next statement in the list. Fresh from the garden every day. Hope you enjoy. You'll remember that from the JSON I showed you earlier. When I walk away, she resets her statement. This is just a passive conversation that the NPC has, and I'm going to implement active conversations where walking up and interacting with the NPC brings across different results. But currently, this was what I was able to get right now. You'll also notice down here uh, for the inventory system, I've got the basics already implemented. It's a little confusing and obviously it's bare bones because they don't have any UI implemented, but these in open and closing square brackets are an example of one inventory slot. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one full inventory slot, so that'd be eight, and then nine and 10, so a total of 10. Most of these are empty, but the third one has one apple and four knives in here. That's kind of how you can read it. And I have logic that allows me to add and remove items from the inventory, and it would be expressed down here. And that brings us to the end of our first sprint. If you've made it this far, then kudos. This was definitely not the interesting video. There was a lot of prep work, not very interesting visuals, and pretty basic code, but I promise it gets more interesting as we go along. If there's anything you'd like to see more of or less of in these videos, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.